walk on the road to Emmaus. And we're walking and talking. Talking and walking. Then all of a sudden, this man comes up behind us. Yes, I remember. He looked at us, and he said, um, he said, why the long faces? And I looked at him, and I said, that's just how we're made. We can't help it, and if you do not like it... The man was speaking metaphorically. Well, I needed him just to be clear. He wasn't clear. We said to him... Uh, oh, well, I said to him, I said, are you the only person in Jerusalem that hasn't heard just what has happened? Right, and I said yeah. to him, uh, Jesus had been crucified, we placed him in the tomb, now we can't find his body. And I went on to say we were just horribly disappointed because we thought Jesus was the one. And he says, uh, why are your head's so thick. Why, why are your heart so slow? And I looked at him right in the eye and I said, we're just getting older. We cannot help it. There's nothing we the can... The man was speaking metaphorically. I just needed him to be clear. Then he looked at us and he started at the beginning with the books of Moses and all through the prophets and explain to us how the scriptures said this would happen to the Messiah. It was wonderful. <laughs> it was amazing. We came to a fork in the road. Just to be clear, it wasn't a literal fork. We came to a spot where the road divided mm -hmm. and I invited him to join us for dinner. I think he said yes, because I told him my wife was making a cobbler. She makes a great cobbler. That woman can cobble. So we get here and we sit down for dinner. And he blessed the meal and he broke the bread. And then... I looked at you. And I looked at you. And we knew our hearts, they were burning inside of us. We were sitting with the Messiah. We, we were sitting at the table with the risen Savior. And then both of us, we, um, we turned to face him and, um, he was gone. Vanished. I never get tired of telling that story. <laughs> I may not remember what I had for lunch, but I'll never forget that story. Tell that story. Well, aren't you a regular Bobby Fisher? <laughs> King me. I'm not going to king you. King me. I'm not going to king you. No, king me. No, king. That's a good story. I'm not going to tell that story. Add that one to your book. That's a good story. What, the story of an old man who cheats at checkers to feel better about himself? You're not clarifying that at all. I just won. Looking right there. That's oh, a yeah. winner right there. That's a good story. That oh. would be the title of the book, The Winner. You are a winner. I am a winner. Look I'm what... speaking metaphorically. Well, why don't you keep you me? Well, good morning and happy Easter. Thank you all for being here today. Uh, Michelle and I would like to just tell you all, you are all winners. That's not speaking metaphorically or anything, but you are all winners. So you please rise with us as we worship together to, to praise our risen Savior. Resurrection, I'll lead 
Hallelujah, his life is destiny. All praise to God the Father. All praise to Christ the Son. All praise to the Holy Spirit. Our God has overcome the King who was and is and evermore will be in Jesus' name. have heard palms up to him. God, we come to you this morning and we are so grateful. We join with millions around the globe this morning to lift up the name of our Savior. We join with generations who have gone before us and are bowing down before the throne of God, singing, holy, holy, holy is the Lamb. You've given so much for us, and we come to give back our worship to you this morning. Let's lift it up, church, this morning. Holy, holy is the Lamb.
thousand generations falling down in worship to sing the song of ages to the Lamb. And all who've gone before us and all who will believe will sing the song of ages to the Lamb. Your name is the highest, your name is the greatest, your name stands above them all. All thrones and dominions, all powers and positions, your name stands above them all.
born of his spirit washed in his blood and what he did for me on calvary is more than enough i trust in god my savior That's why 
our hands there's multiple reasons one of them is is a sign of surrender as we covered last week we we use the palms that we have we use what we have to bring him praise other times we're doing it in a way as that we're seeking out we're seeking out his face for reaching up to heaven and, and, and seeking for his hand to be reaching down to grab a hold of us and to, to pull us up. The day's question is going to be, are we focused on whose grip? The grip of the world, the grip of death that is dragging us down, or are we grabbing a hold and, and focus on the grip of Jesus who is pulling us out to help us to become overcomers of all things? Father God, I pray that you help us to stay focused on you, on your face, on your, on your hand. As, as we're going to learn today is when you grab a hold of us, you will never let us fail. So God, I pray as, we, as we're seeking you, Lord, that you give us eyes to be able to see that beautiful face. God, open our ears so we can hear that small, still voice. Lord, we're praying that you open our mind to be able to understand the scripture we're going to be reading today. And God, oh God, help us to let our hands come off our heart. We've been guarding our heart for so long. We've got to open ourselves up and just say, God, you have our heart. We fully surrender to you. We let your will be done in our life. We want to give everything over to you, God. We're not holding anything back. We're going to surrender it all. And God, we're reaching up for you to take this heart and turn it stir within us and give us a heart that is willing and wanting to be able to follow after you, to obey what your word is saying, God. We are fully surrendered. We are fully going in and grabbing a hold, and we're trusting in you because we know that you hear the, our voice. And what's more important, God, is that you allow us to be able to hear your voice. It's not just us knowing you, but the fact that we praise you is that we are known by you. And that's something to rejoice over. So let's join together and praise God with a big roar and praise. The fact that he is risen today. Overcome the grave because of Jesus Christ. We thank you for being here. As we, we all are joining in together to worship him, there's other ways we do that. We worship him in our tithes and our offering. There's, there's different ways we give here at Grace Church. All, those are all the different ways, but I want you to understand the one way is we do it in unison. I'm going to give a chance for us to be able to come up in a little bit, to come and give up here at the, at the altar. It's a way that, that Michelle and I like to do that because we have changed our mindset to realize our, our finances, they're not burdens, they're blessings. And when we come and we give those to God, we recognize that we are blessed. And we want to take that blessing and use it to bless other people. There's so many people right here in our own community, but places around the world that are in desperation to be blessed. And we have the opportunity to do that right now. There's a scripture I would like to proclaim over your own family, over this body because we're recognizing the fact that we are blessed, we wanna give God our first and our best, not our leftovers, but the first and the best. And we honor him when we do that. So I'll start the word honor and you read all the way through Proverbs 3, 9. Honor. Father, you deserve the best. You deserve the first. We know that you gave us your best and you gave us your first. Help us to do so in the same way as we've learned from you. We thank you for these opportunities, and we bring you honor and praise with the way we give our tithes. In Jesus' name, amen. If you feel led to come and give up here, please do so. If not, meet the people that are around you and tell them he is risen. Oh, I saw the Lord, and he heard, and he answered. I saw the Lord.
All right, well, thank you all for being here in person. Those who are watching online, we want to we want to say Happy Easter to you. Before we get into the message today, I do want to uh, cover a few vision casting things. Uh, the first thing is, is that uh, April 6th, which is this coming uh, Saturday, which it's hard to believe that it's already April, but uh, this, this, this Saturday, April 6th at 8.30, we are dedicating our new garage that we have out here that we built. Uh, the, the Sleep in Heavenly Peace is a, a great ministry that, that helps serve our, our local community as they, as they try to help kids not sleep on the, the floor but sleep into a bed. In, in 2019, they started this uh, this chapter here in the Metro East, and they have not only just made, but have delivered over a thousand beds to our community. That's a huge praise for helping this community. So April 6th at 8.30, if you want to come a little bit earlier, because you do need to sign up, 8.30, it, it'll, everyone say 8.30. Okay, it's at uh, the dedication to that building, and then we're going to be building 25 beds. It's a, it's a great opportunity. The kids can get involved. There's, little, there's different things that, that, are, that are involved with that. It's a great way to serve as a family. The other thing that I want to let you know, there is a Connect card that's in the front of the pew. If you are new today and you would like to know more information, if uh, to, at the end of the service, if you've accepted Jesus or if you made a commitment, a new commitment, you can fill that out. If you have a prayer request, you can fill that out. But I, I also want to let you know that if you've not been baptized or you'd like to get baptized, re-baptized, uh, you can fill that out on this Connect card and, and, and put it in, in, the, in the tithe box by the doors on your way out. And uh, the first three weeks of April, we're going to be baptizing people. So it is very important for you to get baptized. It, it, it's something that we talked about last week that it adds to your testimony. And, and we want to celebrate that with you. So if you are interested in doing that, please make sure to fill out this Connect card. Well, we are here today to celebrate the risen Savior. Uh, I, I, I'm going to say a couple times in the, in the service that he is risen, and I just want you to know, because when I first became a Christian, Pastor Howe would make a couple statements, and the whole church would respond, and I had no idea, and I was like looking in the thing, like, where was I supposed to learn that? So uh, if I say he is risen, then we say he is risen indeed, okay? So he is risen. He is risen okay, very good. And I'll even probably do something like this to try to help you make sure to say that. Uh, so today is focused, a new series called Relationship, and uh, today's title is called From Death to Life. He is risen. Well, as I prayed about this Easter message and, and about Grace Church's commitment to leading people into a growing relationship with Jesus, I, I, I came across this picture, and, and to be honest with you, this picture has just been working on me for a couple months now, and, it, and I've just, just been praying about it. It's been stirring within my heart, and I thought, you know what? What I see about this picture, it is a picture of hope, and, and the, the Easter message is a message of hope, so why not use this picture? The, the reason we celebrate Easter is because Jesus, overcoming the grave, proved beyond a reason of the doubt that he truly is the Son of God, and that his death and resurrection give us hope to overcome death and have eternal life in heaven. When we have a relationship with Jesus, we go from death to life, but it is only for those who believe. God loved all people. He sent his son to die on the cross for all people. Jesus over the, overcame the, the grave for all people, but it is only those who believe who shall be saved. This year we have used several different stories talking about how people, they come in and they have a, they have a relationship with Jesus, they have an encounter with, with Jesus, and, and then they leave different than they entered in. And that is the hope that I have for each and every one of us that this morning, that even including myself, that, that I leave different than I came in. And, and that, is, that, is, that is having a relationship that's taking this word, that's it's stirring it within our heart, and then doing something with it. I'd like to give a little bit of a background to this picture so that we're all on the same page and, and, and understand what's happening. The disciples, they, they, are, they are sent into the, the Sea of Galilee and, and a storm arises and, and it starts rocking the boat so to the point that they are desperate. They, they fought for this, they, they, they fought the, the storms for, for three to four miles. They're, they're, working this, they're working the storm and trying to overcome the storm and, and they can't do it. And then all of a sudden, 
they start seeing Jesus walking on the water uh, towards them, and, and, and it terrifies them. They think that he is a ghost. And in fact, a way to test that, Peter cries out and he says, if you are Jesus, if you are who you say you are, then tell me to come. And so Jesus says, come. And, and, and Peter knows that it's only by the power of Christ that he's able to step out of this boat and walk on water. Not in the power of Peter, not in Peter's faith, but it's only by the power of Christ. And so Peter, he boldly steps out of the boat and he starts walking on the very storm that, that is causing all of them to struggle, knowing that if it was only because of Jesus, he would be able to overcome this mighty struggle. But that struggle, just like our struggle, comes and, and, it, and it doesn't want to go down without a fight. And, and, and so something happens. I don't, I don't know exactly what it was, but may, maybe the, the, we do know that the, they said that the, the storm raged. So I don't know if, if the wind came and blew his face or, or maybe a wave came and knocked into him and, and knocked him down or, 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 or splashed into his face. Something happened where it took Peter to take his fo focus off of Jesus and he focused on the storm. And when he did that, he sank. Peter cries out to be saved, and Jesus immediately reaches out and saves him. Actually, in, in Matthew's account, and Mark's account, and John's account, they use the word immediately, immediately, immediately. you got to praise God for that word, immediately. So Peter, he has an encounter with Jesus. He went down drowning, but he comes up walking on water, hand in hand with Jesus. Christ. Peter left the water. He went down in fear and drowning. He came up different, saved, secure, and safe. The question some of you may be asking, why am I using this picture instead of a picture of a cross or an empty tomb? But I, I, I look at this picture and I, I, I think what, what, someone may ask, what does this picture have to do with Easter? I say everything. The question we're going to be looking at today is, are, what are we looking at? Is it the raging storm or the savior of the world? Are, are, are we focused on death or are we focused on life? I, I believe that there are four things when you look at this picture and I, and I guess the question is, what do you see? What are you focused on, those things? Uh, before we get into that, I'd like to pray. Father, I thank you for this opportunity to be able to preach the gospel today. I thank you, God, for the possibility that lives are going to be changed. This morning as I came in and I saw the clouds and I thought, you know what? I'm not afraid of the rumble because that rumble is all of heaven rejoicing that someone got saved. And it's going to be more than just one person because more than just one church is preaching the truth. And there's going to be churches all around the world that are preaching the fact that, that you overcame the grave and people are going to be saved. And today, all of heaven is going to be rejoicing and rumbling and thundering. And we praise you for that in Jesus' name. Amen. The first thing I'm going to ask you is, do you see the struggle? Do you see the struggle? I want us just to think about Peter. He, he just did the impossible. He stepped out of the safety of this boat. Think about they're in the sea. They can't see land. All they see is water, and they see the raging sea tossing back and forth. They're desperate to stay on that boat because that boat is what's saving their lives. And, 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 and he sees Jesus, and, and, and what he, does he do? He doesn't, he doesn't stay in the boat like all the other disciples. He walks out, calls Jesus. Jesus tells him to come. He, come. he goes out, and he walks on the water, away from the safety of the boat, away from the safety of his companions. He's alone. And he walks towards Jesus, but then he takes his eyes off Jesus, and he sinks. And the, the question I want... To ask today, have you ever been walking and, and like walking downstairs, you miss a step and then you, you go and your stomach is still up here because you went down there and, or you're walking and you step into a hole that you didn't see and, and the same thing, you're, you just feel that like, oh, the emptiness. Peter's walking on 
solid water. It's not ice, it's water. He's, he's got a, something underneath them, and then all of a sudden, whew, nothing. Just gone. He's drowning. For those of you who've been in the water, water splashed up into his nose. It's burning his nostrils. Maybe some got down into his throat. It's burning his throat. Water is splashed into his eyes. It's, it's blurring his vision. The, the clothes that, that, that he was wearing, they're, 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 they're heavy and they're dragging him down. He's not in a, in a bathing suit. He was wearing tunics and, and, and these, these robes and they, they're dragging him down because they're soaked. They're trying to bring him down. Death has got a grip on Peter. It is fear and it is dragging him down. But then he cries out to Jesus to save him. And immediately, Jesus saves his life. I want you to know today that if we willingly call out to Jesus to be our Lord and Savior, he immediately saves us. But I want you to think about that sinking feeling, that feeling of just emptiness and, and, and just despair. Can't catch your breath. Your heart's beating. You want to know what's going to be happening. I wonder if that's the same feeling the disciples were feeling what, as they're sitting in the room, gathered, witnessing. They just witnessed Jesus being crucified on the cross. This isn't the upper room meeting in Acts that we saw with them being so bold. And they, they, they saw Jesus. He ascended into heaven. And, and, and hey, you're going to go there and you're going to wait for the, for the Holy Spirit to come. And they were sitting there with power. Like, oh, man, I just can't see. I can't wait to see what the Holy Spirit's going to do. No, no, this is totally different. I wonder if they could even look at each other in the eye. All they do is just thinking, man, he was arrested. We left him alone. We abandoned him. We didn't stand up for him. We didn't fight for him like he fought for us. When he was dying on the cross, we did nothing. Peter, the guy who walked on water, now he, did, he didn't deny him just one time. He denied him three times. All their hopes, all their dreams, gone. Just think about that despair, that emptiness they must have left them feeling. I, I look at this, and I... I mean, I look at the struggle, and I, I, I love artists, these bubbles. I, I've just been, I, I've been looking at this in my office all week long, and, and it, man, it's, it's beauty. They, they, can, they, they can make this struggle look, look beautiful. The sun is coming through the water. The sun is coming through the water. There, there's beauty in this struggle, but there's also darkness in this struggle, and it made me think, you know, that's kind of like the, the resurrection. I mean, it, 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 very similar, right? Like, we, we, we look at Jesus' death and resurrection, it, it, picture the same thing. There, there, was, there was some darkness to it. It showed the ugliness of humanity. How could a person spit in another person's face? How could a person slap him and, and whip them and rip the beard out of their face and do such a thing to another human being? But yet, at the same time, there is also beauty as we see the measure of God's love for the world. In Romans chapter 5, verse 8, it says, But God demonstrates his own love for us in this, while we were still sinners, while we were still in the sin, while we knew what Christ was going to do and we still walked in the sin, Christ died for us. And just a couple verses before that, in verse 6, it says, You see, at just the right time, when we were still powerless, Christ died for the ungodly. At just the right time, Jesus showed up to save Peter's life. At our most vulnerable times, those, time, those desperate times, those times where we're absolutely powerless, drowning in our doubts, drowning in our, in our shame, drowning in our guilt, drowning in our fear. Christ shows up, and, his, and he shows us his power and his authority by helping us overcome all things. You see, there is beauty in the cross for those who believe. John 3.16 says, Whosoever believes 
shall not perish, but have eternal life. The second thing is, I want to know, did you see his feet? Do you see his feet? 1 Corinthians 15, 20 through 26, the NLT says, But in fact, Christ has been raised from the dead. He is the first of a great harvest of all who died. So you see, just as death came into the world through a man, which was Adam, now the resurrection from the dead has begun through another man, who is Jesus. Just as everyone dies because we all belong to Adam, everyone who belongs to Christ will be given new life. To belong to Christ, the Bible says that we have to confess that Jesus is our Lord with our mouth. We have to believe that God raised him from the dead with our heart. And if we do that, then we are saved. And if we are saved, and when we are saved, then we become sons and daughters of God. Not before then. When we have a personal relationship with Jesus Christ, we have confessed him as our Lord and Savior, we become sons and daughters of God, and because of that, we then belong to Christ and have a place in heaven. Verse 25 says, For Christ must reign until he humbles all his enemies beneath his what? Feet. And the last enemy to be destroyed is death. Peter, you got nothing to fear. Because Christ is here, and he's overcome, the de- overcome death. God spoke this in the book of Genesis when he, when he told Adam and Eve that their seed would crush the head of the serpent with his heel, with his foot. But if you just, just look at this picture, I want you to see what he's standing on. He's standing on the, the, the very thing that we are struggling with and the things that we're drowning in. He is standing on our doubts. He's standing on our shame. He's standing on our guilt. He's standing on on our depression, our anxiety, our hurts, our pains, our, 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 our fears. Whatever we're drowning in, he's standing on them. And he's not standing on them to trample us down. But but he's doing it to to get his foot planted and be able to take us up out of it, keeping those things down and us over them, allowing us to overcome the very things that we're drowning in. You see, Peter on his own, he had no foundation. He was going to drown in his fears. But we just read that it's because of Christ that even in our sins, even in our fear, even in our doubt, Christ died for us, letting us know that death has no grip on us. The third point is, do you see his hand? The disciples, they're, they're gathered together after the crucifixion of Jesus, trying to catch their breath as they try to understand what just happened to Jesus. Jesus, the same man who called Lazarus out of the grave from, from the death. That Jesus, the same man who, who saved others, who, who walked on water, is now lying dead in a tomb. For some of them, the last thing they, they saw was he, he, he was dead, bloodied, to a, beaten to a bloody pulp, covered in blood, li- hanging dead from a cross. That was the last image they saw. And in their time of desperation, in that time of grief and the shame and guilt and fear, feeling like their stomach was up in their throats, Jesus appears to them, allowing them to overcome the grave. Luke 24, 36 through 47, Jesus stood among them and said, Peace be with you. They were startled and frightened, thinking they saw a ghost. He said to them, Why are you troubled, and why do doubts rise in your minds? Look at my hands. Look at my feet. It is I myself. Touch me and see. Ghosts do not have flesh and bones, as you say I see I have. When he said this, he showed them his hands and his feet. Verse 44 said, he he said to them, This is what I told you while I still was with you. Everything must be fulfilled that is written about me in the law of Moses 
and the prophets and the Psalms. We have to stop trying to cancel out the Old Testament. We can't cancel out parts of the Bible from Genesis all the way to Revelations. They are there. Everything is in there to tell about Jesus. To cancel out any of that is to cancel out a part of Jesus. He fulfilled all of those promises and those prophecies. Why would we want to cancel them out? Verse 45 says, then he opened their minds so they could understand the scriptures. God, open our minds so we can understand the scriptures. And he told them, this is what is written, the Messiah will suffer and rise from the dead and on the third day, and repentance for the forgiveness of sins will be preached in his name to all nations, beginning at Jerusalem, he is risen. He is risen indeed. Jesus comes to the disciples and willingly shows them the nail marks in his hands and on his feet to prove the point that he truly died, but he is truly alive. Now, if you look at this picture, I, I, I want you to make sure you see, look at the posture of Jesus. Look at, look at what is happening. What do we, what do we see? And, and, and we see this hand that is reaching to try and help. Isaiah 41, verse 13 says, For I, for I, the Lord your God, hold your right hand. It is I who say to you, fear not. I am the one who helps you. I love the fact that it's God who's holding us, and we're dependent on God holding us, not us holding God. It's like those movies you see people hanging over the cliff or over the building and and you got the one hanging the other and the other and their their grip's slipping and all those things. We don't have to fear because God has got a hold of us. Death has no grip. I I, I want you to picture Peter. He's down in the water. Look at Peter's. Look, Look from Jesus' perspective down at Peter. His arms are all over the place, trying to, trying to catch his breath, trying to, trying to get a footing, trying to do something to control the uncontrollable. And Jesus, Jesus, what did he do? He didn't just stand there and be like, oh, you're almost there. Here, let me take a picture of this. Here, let me do a good selfie. Yeah, that's going to look, come on, Peter. What did he do? He got down and he put his arm into the shame. He put his arm into the guilt and he ripped Peter up out of it. And I want you to think about this. As he's pulling him up out, the raging sea sea is still happening. It's still coming. And he pulls him up and it's just him and Peter and they're face to face. And I bet you there you couldn't hear a sound of anything. You just saw Peter looking up at Jesus and Jesus looking at him. And they're face to face. And all the fear, all the worry, there was nothing. It was just dead quiet. And I think the breath you heard, Peter, is like when our toddlers are crying and they're overwhelmed and they make that, (sighs) I am safe because my Lord Jesus has a hold of me and I can see him face to face. There is nothing more to fear. Do you see his face, the fourth point. You know, lack of eye contact shows a person that, that they are uncomfortable, that they are afraid, that they are lying, that they are hiding something. Maybe it's their guilt or their shame. For those of you who don't know, I, I don't keep to repeating this, but there are new faces here, and I thank you for being here. My wife and I, uh, we ran an orphanage in China. We, we served there for 13 years. We had an orphanage for nine of those years. Uh, the kids, they called me daddy. They, they called my wife mommy. And, and when we saw them and they entered into our home, the very, the very first thing we would do is we put our hands on their face and we would hold them so they could see us face to face. And I would say, I want you to know there's nothing you have to fear because we're here to help you. Throughout all of the things that happened in, in China, we, we had to leave and that means we had to leave our kids in the, that orphanage. They, they weren't legally our kids. We just called them our kids. In the four years that we've been back here, 
we've stayed in contact with those kids. We've, we've sent messages to them. We've called them. We've, we've, we've sent pictures. And a lot of times we're sending pictures to them of our faces. We, we, we welcome you to take pictures in the lobby afterwards. And, and we'll send those pictures to our kids. And we'll say, guys, will you please send a picture back because we're desperate to see your face. We haven't seen you in four years. And if they do send a picture, it's always blocking their face. And we can just feel the hurt and the betrayal and the abandonment. And we long and we have prayed for four years of saying, God, when is the time for us to be able to go back just for a visit? But we just want to go back to see them face to face, to make sure that they're okay. And then they can see us face to face to recognize that it's okay Life is going to keep going on, but, but I have to tell you something. I'm in a more desperate or desperation that they, for them to see my face is that I want them to see the face of God. And just as much as I want Michelle and I to see the face of God. Psalms 27, verse 7 through 9 says, Hear my voice when I call. Lord, be merciful to me and answer my heart. It's my heart that is saying, seek his face. Your face, Lord, I will seek. Do not hide your face from me. Do not turn your servant away in anger. You have been my helper. Do not reject me or forsake me, God, my Savior. I want you to look at the concentration on Jesus' face. Recognize that he's standing on the same storm that caused so much fear. On the same water that Peter sank and is drowning in. Je Jesus is standing on that. He felt the same gusts of wind. It probably blew his hair all over. The, the waves, they, they probably bumped into him trying to flex their muscle to see if they could do the water. They probably splashed in his face and burned his nostrils. They, they stung, the water stung his, his eyes. But no matter how much that struggle tried to get Jesus' focus off, Jesus stayed focused on us. 1 Chronicles 16.11, David gives us instructions to seek God's face. Always. Not just on Sundays. Always be seeking his face. And in the book of Revelations, it says that one day, for all those who believe, who have accepted Jesus Christ as their Lord and Savior, they will be able to see God face to face where he is going to wipe the very tears from our face. Only if we believe. The takeaway is this. In 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verse 7, Paul says, we walk by faith, not by sight. Jesus overcame the grave to, to save us spiritually, to save us physically, to save us emotionally, to save us mentally, to save us in any way we needed to be healed. That's what he did. In Isaiah 53, verse 5, it says, But he was pierced for our transgressions. He was crushed for our iniquities. The punishment that brought us peace was on him, and it is by his wounds that we are healed. The New King James Version says that it's by his stripes that we are healed. The question that I'd have to ask is, do we need to see those stripes, or can we just believe in them? There is no greater hope in the world than that of Jesus Christ overcoming the grave because he made a way to take us from death into life. He filled the gap. He takes us from wherever you are right now and wherever I am right now, and he fills the gap. He pulls us up. He sets us on the path. He walks hand in hand to get us towards that narrow door, that narrow path, the right path on the way to God. So I'd like everyone to close their eyes and look inside their own heart. The question is, what are you drowning in? Is it guilt? Is it shame? 
Maybe it's doubt or fear. What has your focus? Have you been focusing on the, the struggle? Or can you see Christ through the struggle and have a persevering character that hopes in God? I think there's two prayers I'm going to pray here. The first one is if you do not have a personal relationship with Jesus Christ and want one, don't wait. Now is the time. And if that is you, be so bold and reach your hand up like Peter reached up to try to grab Jesus. If you need a personal relationship, just reach up. I see you. The second prayer, the second group that needs prayer is if you are like Peter, if you're like all of us and from time to time and you are drowning and you want to be saved, now is the time. Reach up and ask God to save you. There's hands all over the place. If you raised your hand, it's a simple prayer of just saying, Jesus, be my Lord and Savior. Forgive me of my sins. Help me to live a life I cannot live on my own. Help me to become more and more like you. To realize that your grip has got a grip on me that the devil can't win. And you're going to pull me out of this death. You're going to pull me out of the struggle. And we're going to walk hand in hand together. In Jesus' name. Will you all please stand with me? Can we get our communion ready? ask for Michelle to start coming up because we've always taken communion and so if you're with a a loved one you can break the bread when that when that time comes and then share it with them because your 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 loved one your spouse they share in your struggle they they they're there to help you this is what we need brothers and sisters who are gonna be with us so we lift up the lift up the wafer We take communion often in remembrance of this day, but we celebrate Easter every day. We celebrate the fact that he's risen every day. So we lift up the wafer and then we break it. And we can hear the sound of that brokenness. Just like we can hear the sound when we're broken, we're crying out because we're drowning. We, we surrender the the burden that's causing the brokenness to Christ because he sa- it says he was broken so we don't have to be. So when we take this bread, it's remembering that we're whole and strong because of Christ. Go ahead and take of the bread. And then we lift up the juice. The juice represents the blood that we and we have asked Jesus to be our Lord and Savior and ask him to, to forgive us of our sins, that, that blood washes us completely clean, white as snow. The Bible says that God takes the offense of the sin and throws it into a sea of forgetfulness because he wants to see us through Jesus. So when we take this juice, it's an honor to knowing that we are clean. In Jesus' name, go ahead and take of the juice. Father, we we celebrate your son, the courage, the boldness. We thank you that he walks on the very struggles that we're drowning in, not to push us down, but in a way to pull us out. So God, we we celebrate your great love. We celebrate we celebrate him, the fact that he has risen, overcome the grave. And the fact that there is no grip of death on us anymore. And we praise your name for it. In Jesus' name. Amen. Happy Easter.
All right. Now, I, this is going to be a little different because it is Easter. So I think all of you online people, we're going to say goodbye online people. And we're going to ask you to sit down. I have to... Thank you for being a part of Grace Church Online today. If you haven't done so already, follow us on Facebook or subscribe to our YouTube channel so you'll know every time we go live with new content throughout the week. If you need to connect with us, you can send us an email using the email address gracecentral at graceweb.tv or you can send us the online connect card which is found in the online form section of our website www.graceweb.tv. If you'd like to support the church financially, use the Give button on our website or text the word GIVE to 618-414-4220 and you can give via text message. Again, thank you for being here today. God bless and we'll see you next time at Grace.